Welcome to Financial Strategies with Andrew Adjami in Connecticut and Daniel Adjami in Colorado. Well, there's a lot of uncertainties in life, but there's three things that we know are certain, death, taxes, and change. And there certainly is a lot of change. Join us today as we talk about change and talk about what you need to know in 2024 on Financial Strategies with Andrew and Daniel Adjami. I'm Andrew Adjami. And I'm Daniel Adjami, and you're listening to Financial Strategies. AAA, happy 2024. Amen. How's the how's the year treating you so far? <laughs> well, you know, that's interesting you should say that because, you know, last Friday I got a call that, that you know, our pastor, 50 years old, died of a heart attack. And that's not, that's a, that's a big change, you know, but, you know, when change happens, opportunity happens. And when we're talking about a new year, change happens with a new year and there's opportunity with that. A lot of it is how you look at it and what you do with it, right? What is your response to the change? You can't change the change, but you can change your response to the change, which determines the outcome. And that's what I'm excited about today's show, because, you know, a lot of changes going on in 2024. But, you know, you know, the one thing like last time you said, hey, hey, Andrew, you know, what's that thing behind? But dad, what's that thing behind you there? You look like a different certain area. It's like, where in the world's Andrew today, right? (laughs) Well, today I'm in uh, the Tampa, Florida area and uh, Daniel's in Denver and, and, and hey, you know, stay tuned for next week to find out where we're going to be next week, <laughs> because you never know where we're going to show up next. So, you know, stay tuned for that. But pretty cool stuff going on here. And uh, glad to be able to to hit this topic of what you, what people need to know in 2024. And with all the change going on, Daniel, right, people, that people need to know what to do with all this change. And some people don't even know that they don't know that there's change going on. And and they do know change from certain areas, but you know what we're always uh, attuned to is helping people see things and know things that they don't know because people don't know what they don't know, and that's why financial strategies, thank you, Daniel Adjami, has been created to help people to know what they don't know when it comes to retirement and finances. Yeah, so there is a lot of uncertainty out there. We talk to people every day and we hear all these kinds of we hear all these kinds of things what am i to do you know you've got bulls saying that there's going to be a bull market and and we're just going to see we already had the recession and we're going to we're just going to be going up there's people saying there's a lot of bad economic data coming in all over the place there's crazy things coming in and get ready for something crazy and you know do i go to cash or do i stay fully invested or is it somewhere in between? And 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 people don't know what's going on. We don't have a crystal ball. We don't know, but we are good at looking at data, collecting data, and helping people make decisions. So today's show is about what you need to know in 2024. And we want to help people point out some things and help them make smart decisions. Maybe a kind of outlook, uh, state of the economy for 2024. Yeah. Right. And and what to do, you know, when you're talking about investing, right? People, some people listen to our show, Daniel, are do it yourself first, right? Where they're investing for themselves and doing buying and selling for themselves, doing whatever on their, on their own. Some people listen to our show or not. So they, they have people who are, you know, doing it for them, uh, you know, where, where some people, you know, like our clients are the C, the CEOs of their portfolios, we're the CFOs of their portfolios. And then you got the other people who have who are doing it themselves but getting tired of doing it themselves and wanting to do something differently. Well, today's show is going to be for for all you folks to be able to have some perspective of what what's going on in the world and when it comes to investments. Because investing today is not like it was in yesteryear, whether you go back even five years, right? Daniel, today is different than even five years and and certainly different than 10 years and certainly different than 20 years ago. And some people are stuck in the same, you know, the same way of doing things over the past decades because they're enamored with the stock market and they think the stock market is the only way to go. But, you know, that is a way to go, but it is not the only way to go. And is it the best way to go when you're in retirement or approaching retirement? Well, you make the decision if you're listening to us today and in all our shows because we're trying to educate you to make good decisions. 
So yeah. Daniel, all these things are happening, right? Well, you know, let's talk about some of those things, how it's, you can't invest the same way today as you used to be able to, right? You know, my mind goes to, you know, how people invested in the seventies and eighties may, it, it was a lot different than how can people can invest today. Am I right? Yeah. Well, it, you know, it makes me think about something Jeff Gunlack said, where, you know, the, the federal reserve has gotten in ways that in the past have not been legal for them to do. So like in COVID, <laughs> you know, the fed wasn't allowed to buy junk bonds, but they figured out a way to do that in COVID. So the Federal Reserve and the Treasury have gotten more involved in markets than at any other time. Another thing that we have going on with this stuff is 401k and passive investing. And what we mean by that is, is people have their account set up so that a portion of their paycheck automatically goes into something like the S&P 500. And the S&P 500 is 500 stocks. Well, you think it's 500 stocks, right? <laughs> there's a difficulty where there's, there's these seven stocks called the Magnificent Seven that represent about 29% of the S&P 500. So if you think that you're diversifying between all these sectors, energy and materials and, you know, different sectors, different industries, you end up going into almost all tech. Yeah, not only only all tech, but about seven stocks. So think about all the flows of money yeah. that are coming from people's paychecks into seven stocks. What do you think is going to happen to those seven stocks? <laughs> They're going to go up. Until something changes, right? Until something, until something makes them not until go Until they up. don't. Right. <laughs> and when that's what we're talking about liquidity, right? That's that's nothing the stocks did to get more money to come into them. They're not they're not making enormous amount. Yes, these companies make money, but not compared to their market caps, right? Right. Th they're not they're not coming with these record numbers. Maybe Nvidia, but it's not these amazing things. It's just that liquidity, money's automatically going into these things which is making the market caps of these companies go up, which is driving the price Okay. You're listening to Financial Strategies with Andrew and Daniel Adjami. Today's topic is what you need to know in 2024. And Daniel's talking about liquidity, people, you know, people pumping money into the market. And we're going to talk about the government's pumping money in the market like they did in the past and are now. But what, one of the ways that people used to, and still is valuable, uh, evaluate whether a stock is good to invest in is, is looking at price and earning ratios. And we have a paper that we put together for you today, understanding price to earning ratios. And this may be able to help you understand on how to analyze a stock not like so much we were able to do in the previous years, but it still is helpful. We'd love to put this in your hand. You can have it for free by calling 800-725-7616 and getting your copy, 800-725-7616. You listen to Financial Strategies because people don't know what they need to know. And today we're talking about what you need to know in 2024. Daniel, this idea of liquidity is people pumping money into the market, right? Like they did in the 80s and 90s, the, the, the baby boomers, more people than ever, making more money than ever. 401ks were a new thing. So people were flooding money into the stock market because these, these, these mutual funds and things, they had to buy because there was so much money coming in. There's a lot of liquidity and you can't keep it in cash. It has to be invested. So the market went up in the 80s and 90s and it continues to do that because money there's this liquidity issue right you know and what's but but today we still have people pumping it in because people are working and putting money in 401ks but there's other ways that the liquidity comes about right right and and that's that's enormous amount of money through these through these passive investing 401k it's dumb money it's it's money that automatically comes out of 401k and it has to buy something it there's no price discovery it doesn't matter what the price is no one's determining if this is a good or bad deal it's automatically going in <laughs> that's a lot of money but the even bigger thing is the almost unlimited amount of quantitative easing or programs or qe forever whatever you want to call it 
that's been happening in the background. So the the government and the Federal Reserve are doing one thing while they're saying something else. So they're yes. saying we're pulling out liquidity and you see Jay Powell going out there or he hasn't for a while now, but he was going out there raising rates to drain liquidity, right? To tighten mm-hmm. financial conditions. Mm-hmm. And in 2024, there, there's already on the dot plot. Now, this is this is not what markets are saying. This is what the Federal Reserve is saying. They have something like three cuts already priced in for 2024. Now, you and I didn't really think rates were going to stay too long for f- high for too long. I, you know, they went higher than especially I thought that they would go. But now it's kind of tapering off. And as inflation is coming in, rates actually look very high, very high. So okay. typically you would keep rates high until a, a recession comes and then they would lower back down to loosen liquidity. But what's going on in the background here is yeah. liquidity is <laughs> coming in through all these different avenues. It's not being talked about, but one is first quarter of last year, we had bank failures, right? Right. Well, what happened? New programs spun up, stealth programs spun up that aren't pumping money into the markets necessarily, but they were giving banks money. They could take a security value at say $50 million and get a hundred million dollars of collateral. You know, they give wow. they give bonds, say 50% <clears throat> of yep. their value, but they yep. get par, they'd get a hundred percent of what it should be. That's yep. adding enormous amounts of liquidity. So there's things going on like that. There's things like the stealth oil printing or or massive amounts of oil being produced. And we like that because we see oil, we see gas prices coming down. That makes people happy. That also gives people more money to spend. So there's a lot of stealth liquidity injections going on, which are driving asset prices higher. Yeah. And you know, that stealth oil, what did you call it? Stealth oil drilling? <laughs> what did you I call said it? printing, but you could call oh. it, you know, drilling, you could call yeah. it production, you can production. call it whatever you okay. like. There's stealth more oil, oil pre- coming into the market than ever. Okay. Stealth in the oil US. production, which is very interesting, right? Because that's one of the reasons why the grass price is low, but we're not hearing that. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not, you know, Washington's not touting what they're doing, you know, and I think it's really interesting because, you know, if they were, they would be offending certain proponents of their of their agenda and then of their background because it doesn't go along with their agenda. But the, but that's a, that's another story. We're not trying to get political here. But anyway, you know, if you're listening, just tuned in, you're listening to Financial Strategies with Andrew Daniel Ajmi. What do you need to know in 2024? This is all about helping people out know what they don't know about retirement and retiring. And today we have a book that we love to give you before we go to break that's going to do just that. A friend of mine, Anthony Saccaro, More Life Than Money, How Not to Outlive Your Savings. Anthony does a phenomenal job when he, in writing this book and describing all the, all the basics and then some of what you need to know when you're thinking about retiring and making sure you don't run out of money. And you call for your free copy to 800-725-7616. This is a best-selling Amazon bestseller, 800-725-7616 for your free copy. The f- first five first-time callers at 800-725-7616. Call now. This is Financial Strategies with Andrew and Daniel Adjami. Daniel, you know, I, I enjoy talking with people, finding out what's going on in their lives and how they're doing things. And yesterday I was speaking with somebody and, you know, the, this person is not a client of ours. And I just look in and he's got this IRA that he moved a lot of money over from his work stuff into this IRA. And uh, he's concerned about what's happening in the market and all the change going on in the world these days. And so he just wanted to make the thing safe and And he he goes to the bank and the bank's investment arm comes and they put the money into this IRA form and they say, okay, now we can do, you know, we got three choices. The three Mm -hmm. choices are we can, we can put the money into the stock market with the 70% into stocks, 30% into quote unquote bonds. And we can do 50% into stock, 50% into quote unquote bonds, or we can put it just and leave it in this money market making four and a half percent. For, for now. So he decided to leave it in a four and a half percent account. But 
you know, the, the thing that's crazy is that those were the only options he was given. I'm Andrew Adjami. And I'm Daniel Adjami, and you're listening to Financial Strategies. Today, we're talking about what you need to know in 2024. And AAA, that story resonates. He is not the only <laughs> person thinking <laughs> that, and he is not the only person that is getting, you know, cookie cutter advice. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good <laughs> term. <Yeah. laughs> uh, there's a lot of things I would have said, but I, I wasn't thinking of that term. <laughs> that's, a, that's a nice term, Daniel. Good job. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, and that's what so many companies out there do. They have cookie cutter report, the, the cookie cutter products, right? I mean, you, you get a company as a generalist and they work with people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. And it's all generally the same stuff, but, you know, d laid out a little bit different, but the same stuff. As opposed to an invest a, a retirement income specialist who's looking at people in and close to retirement and things just for them to help people get across that mountain of retirement that snow cap cover mountain of retirement rather than just up and down so yeah it, it's egregious right that they only give them this cookie cutter advice you only got a few options and that's what people tend to think is the case but the world has changed we are not 2024 we are not in the same situation as we were in the even you know the year 2000 by a long stretch things are different and we have to change with that. And that's what people need to know is what to change and how to change, right? And what we talked about in the first half is understanding that, you know, the the money going into the stock market right now is is huge. And so that could, that has the potential to pump up the market, but it's not based upon anything. It's not based upon the companies being good, solid companies, the stock being good, solid stocks, that the companies are actually making money. That's that, you know, in the past, that's how people invested, right? Because companies were making money and, and they looked at the PE ratios and that said whether the company was making money or not. And that's, you know, the paper that we have to get out to people's PE ratios. But today you can't base it solely upon that like you could in the past. I talked to a guy recently whose um, father used to invest this way. His father's been dead probably close to, I don't know, 15, 20 years. And he said, I can't imagine telling my dad, I bought a company that was, you know, you know, worth, you know, the PE <laughs> ratio was, was, you know, out of this world that wasn't making any money. I can't imagine what he, he'd be rolling over in his grave. Right. And so it's not the same thing. We talked about liquidity and now we got liquidity, not only from people putting money in their 401ks and stuff like that. Right. But we have the government pumping it in, which is not new to the government. Government started that in 2008 with quantitative easing, cash for clunkers, TARP, you know, all, quantitative easing one, quantitative easing two, quantitative easing three. And they had that other one. And they finally stopped pumping the money into the market. My understanding is in October of 2014, which when that happened, the market went flat for the next two years until 20, the end of 2016, mm -hmm. when Trump got elected and the market took off. And it's been crazy, right? Now the government's talking about doing it again, right? Is well, that they, what they already have? I mean, so 2018, we had that repo spike and they started putting it in 18. And oh. then obviously money got pumped in like crazy in, in the COVID years, just yep. insane. Like, like it actually went in the market. So usually it's not going into the market. It's just making looser conditions, right? Okay. 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 Easier. Sometimes they're but buying, they're buying make bonds, they're doing things, but it, it's liquidity. And, and, and I, some of our listeners may think we're kind of old fashioned. We're just always talking about, you know, bonds and bond like instruments. We, we pay attention to these things and you have to pay attention to these things. Right. Um, to understand how markets work today, but it's, it's like a game of musical chairs, right? When you're investing, so it was either Benjamin Graham or Warren Buffett. Benjamin Graham was Warren Buffett's mentor. And they say, price is what you pay. Value is what you get. So you can buy the best company in the world. But if you pay too much for it, it was a bad investment. Yep. And some people might give me a hard time because I'm always saying Apple, Apple, Apple. The valuation, it's a great company, but the price is too much. Everyone owns Apple and the price is too much for what they earn. You yeah. can buy a bankrupt company that's actually a good value because it has more assets than what you pay for. It, and when they liquidate it, you'll get a return. Now, 
I'm not saying buy bankrupt companies and not buy good. Ah, 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 what I am <laughs> saying is you have to know what you're buying and not just count on liquidity coming in. Because when the music stops, if you don't have a seat, you're out of the game. And if that's your retirement, that is Woo! not something you want to put on the line. Not at all. You're listening to Financial Strategies with Andrew Daniel Edgemeet because people don't know what they don't know. And after listening to our show, hopefully you know a little bit more. So be able to make smart decisions. We've got a paper we want to educate you with. That's called Understanding Price to Earning Ratios. And you can have that. We put that together for you to be able to help with this show, be able to help you understand a little bit better what we're talking about. And it is something that's used to be able to determine if a company is a good company to buy or not, which uh, is kind of going by the wayside, but it's still a value. We love to put this in your hand for free by calling us at 800 725 Seven six one six eight hundred seven twenty five seventy six sixteen. Love to put that in your hand. Call now for that. Are you listening to financial strategies? Today's topic is what you need to know in twenty twenty four. Daniel, there's a lot of changes going on. The stock market is poised. It could go up. It could go down. Right, and the key is being positioned so that no matter which happens. You're not out of a seat in that game of musical chairs that the stock market is playing, right? Right, right. Now let's let's talk a little bit about about somebody because we've heard a lot of people saying the markets look for all three, and they do. And look at all this economic data coming in. That's negative, right? We see headlines like student debts, students aren't paying their student loans. Like it's been a period where they have not had to been paid or former students, it's not current students, it's people <laughs> who have student debts. They haven't been paid since COVID. They haven't had to be paid since COVID, and it finally came off. And something like 40% of students aren't paying those. Mm. We see things like this banking crisis, where these banks failed and liquidity was pumped in to boost these banks. We see things like mortgages, where people can't afford a home because the interest rate is so much, even though housing's come down, it's still your monthly payment is still more than it would have been with the with the lower rates. Yeah. And there's all these things. People don't want to sell their house. Mm -hmm. Because why would you sell the house? You can't buy the same house because of what you'd have to get your new mortgage rate for. How the commercial real estate has all this debt that they have to roll over. Mm -hmm. And they can't afford the new debt based on the rents they're collecting on these huge, you know, buildings downtown San Francisco or places like that, right? So there's there's the two sides. You see the liquidity, yeah, and you see the economic data. So what do you do? You just put the money in the bank and you say it's too hard. It's too hard, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> just put it in there. Just let it just let it do whatever, right? I, I mean, the good news is you're getting a little bit of interest rates yeah. depending where you put it in the bank, right? But uh, you know, the, the good news is the interest rates are high, people are getting better returns on their CDs and whatnot. The bad news is the rates are high and people are getting better rates on their CDs, right? Because the question is a lot of times these are one year, two year CDs, maybe they're five year CDs. Well, what happens at the end of that time frame? They could be shooting their cells in the foot short term by going into those. And it, you, oh, I'm sorry, they could be shooting themselves in the foot long term by going into those on the short term side of things. And that can be problematic. And that's why, you know, the positioning needs to be good. You know, it's kind of interesting what you were talking about earlier when you said about, cat, you know, companies like Apple and how you could invest in a bankrupt company and, and, or, or, or even that, what that you said, you know, people might think we're stodgy th talking about bonds and bond like instruments and that kind of thing. But, but, you know, we didn't tell them about that stock you were telling me about earlier that, that hey. what was the return? We owned it for less than a year and we got what? 120%. Return on it, yeah. Just, just in, in the aggressive portfolio, just over a year, and uh, you know, it was a uh, hundred and eighty percent. Hundred and eighty percent. Now that doesn't happen all the time. That doesn't happen on every stock, and we're not touting that. We're just trying to say we're looking at things differently, and this is why you need to know what you don't need to know for twenty twenty four. And you know, it's it, you know this this liquidity. The government is throwing money into the market or, or making money available. 
and trying to drive the market up. It may very well be to get approval ratings up, but you know, whatever the case is, its position, it could go up. But the question is, what's going to happen? It's kind of like they're pumping sugar into the market, right? Man, what would happen? You know, I I, I was with my my granddaughter the other day, two year old granddaughter, you know, and you know, you know, I was babysitting her. You know, I want her to call me grandma, grandpa ice cream, right? And so, you know, I gave her. I, her mother left, and you know what I did? I went to the freezer and I pulled out the ice cream. I said, "Here, let's have some ice cream." And so she had some ice cream, you know. And I'm thinking, oh, what's her mother going to say? She's not going to want to take her nap, right? Because that sugar. You know, it's going to make her go crazy. You know, I ended up taking her out to the park and she was all fine. But my point is, what happens when you get that sugar coming in, right? You get that sugar rush, that sugar high, and then the sugar wears off or caffeine, right? Then it wears off and you crash. And with this liquidity aspect that that is happening with the government and all this money going into the market, you know, it it doesn't give a good foundation to investments in the stock market. And if this is all the money you have, and the, if you're reaching retirement and close to retirement, that could be very problematic. You know, people ask me, what do you do for a living, Andrew? And I say, I help people retire and stay retired. And we don't help people stay retired by putting them in the stock market, or at least exclusively in the stock market, like most professional financial people, right? So, and I'm on it's, my high it's horse. Not, it's not one size fits all. Right. And we'll get more into it in a second period of time but but it's looking more and more like 1997 1998 and a lot of people don't realize <laughs> there was a lot of money pumped into the economy because the government was worried about y2k and a lot of money got pumped into the economy and that's partly why we had that big run up into the wow. tech bust because yeah. they were worried about this huge event happening it's funny going back and looking how scared people really were about yeah. Y2K. And it was a non-event, but it could have been. And governments really added liquidity, sort of like what may be happening now. Wow. Wow. I didn't think of that part, Daniel. But man, I like I like how you think, man. Where'd you, where'd <laughs> you learn how to think like that? That's pretty good. Uh, good. <laughs> so, hey, you know, man, I could just keep going with this because this is a pretty exciting topic and uh, whatnot. But I need to... We need to take a break. You listen to Financial Strategies with Andrew and Daniel Ajami. Today's topic is what you need to know in 2024. And the book we're giving away today is a book by our good friend, Anthony Saccaro. And it's it's called More Life Than Money, How Not to Outlive Your Savings. And Anthony does a great job in this Amazon bestseller. We'd love to put this in your hand for free by calling 800 725 Seven six one six, or contact us on our website adjmy.com the two words age my spell our last name a-g-e-m-y and you know you can contact us there and or give us some questions that you want us to answer on the air and whatnot as well first five callers first time callers 800-725-7616 for your copy of more money more life than money call now you're locked on Financial strategy with Andrew and Daniel Andrew. I think it was Daniel either COVID or pre COVID. When I would fly into Tampa and rent a car, there was a big old sign saying, Rent this. And it was a Shelby GT 500H, a seven to 900 horsepower car with a supercharger. And I've been wanting to rent that car. And it was just the other day I rented it. Finally, it just came in like a couple months ago after all these years, and I had to go through a lot to actually get it, but I got it. But this car is amazing. It's got this supercharger on it. Like I say, 700 to 900 horsepower, depending, depending on how they're rating it at, at the moment. But, you know, when I'm on the highway and I'm traveling down the highway at a good clip and it's nothing that, that you, you punch it and that supercharger kicks in and it's like everybody else is standing still. and <laughs> You know, and 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 that's what we do with investments. I'm Andrew Adjami. And I'm Daniel Adjami. And you're listening to Financial Strategies. Triple A, how does a supercharger on a vehicle have to relate to investments? Well, I'm and glad you like used a pretty far con pretty fun car to drive. <laughs> well, yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. But 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 the point is, is that, you know, you use the exact right words, Daniel, and I don't know if you did it on purpose like that or not. But what, what does, you know, a vehicle, 
you know, what have to do with this, right? Well, investments are vehicles, right? There's motor vehicles and there's investment vehicles, right? And, you know, and what do they do? They, they perform, they do different things. They, they, they provide something. And so what the supercharger in a motor vehicle has to do with investments is that that's what we do with people's investments. And that's what you need in 2004. When we're talking about what you need to know in 2000, people need to know how to supercharge their investments, not just turbocharge. I mean, that's one thing, but supercharge is a whole nother thing, right? You know, you know, the, you know, the, ter- you know, on, on the, on, on the big power gas engines that they have, they're not putting turbos to get them this eight to 900 horsepower on them. They're putting superchargers on them, right? It's a whole nother thing. And when you're looking at your investments, do your investments have a supercharger? That's the big case, right? And Daniel, you're, you're the best at describing the supercharger aspect to people's investments. So go, man. <laughs> Well, when, when we get situations like we're in where we have a liquidity-driven world, and we, we just talked about you have, this, you have this 401k you need to roll over. You're worried about what's going on. You've got a million dollars. You roll it over. You roll it over into the bank or you roll it over into an IRA that you're managing. And you say, what do I do? Should I keep this in cash? Now, what we've seen not only in our investing careers, but when we look back through history, what ends up happening is things get more euphoric than you can imagine when a lot of liquidity is <laughs> coming into the markets. And when people, all they can do, they're, they're taking pictures of their 401ks, <laughs> posting them on social media, like reading about <laughs> the 16th century, they would be turning over people's carriages to try to get their attention so they could invest in the company. Like these things literally are happening, faking deaths so that the, so that the people in charge of allocating the stocks would come over and give them stocks. Yeah. You know, I like what you say there that people get euphoric, right? And and so the, the idea is that people, people, things are going so well that people don't think they're going to get bad. They're so optimistic that they're not, they don't, they're not thinking about the flip side of things, right? And that's kind right. of what you're talking about. Great. Go. And, and somehow markets always have a way of inflicting the most pain on investors. Mm-hmm. So what ends up happening and, and why our show is called Financial Strategies is because what people will end up doing is they'll take their money out of the market because they see bad economic data. Yep. Because everything looks like it's falling apart and they put it into a money market account and they say, I'm going to earn four and a half percent. And all this is good so far. (laughs) The difficulty comes in six months or one year when they see all their neighbors getting rich and they decide to invest, which drives (laughs) it up more, which makes more neighbors invest, which drives it up, which makes more people invest. And by the time everyone's fully invested and most people didn't get that full run up, Right. The right. people who are trying to be prudent bought in at the top and then they watch it come crashing down. And that's something that you need a strategy to protect yourself from. If you're going to put the money in the bank and collect four and a half percent, you have to have a strategy so you can hold on and do that while you see your neighbors riding markets up. It is in this scenario. We are correct, and liquidity keeps getting pumped in and drives things up. Right. And if the Fed cuts rates like they're saying they will do, and your 4.5% turns into 2%, yeah, and markets have gone up, are you still going to stick to that strategy? Are you going to say, all right, I'm only getting 2 now, not 4.5%. I'm going to buy the market when it's 50% higher than it was when I started, right? These are things we want investors to think about. The flip side is, well, I'm just going to throw caution to the wind and go full invested. I think that's where the turbo comes in, right? Where the supercharger, where the supercharger comes in. Yeah. Because when you build a robust portfolio that can satisfy your lifestyle needs, and we're talking to retirees here, you've already built your wealth. You're not trying to get rich. You're trying to protect your money and satisfy your retirement needs. Yeah. Keep the lifestyle that you want. And the supercharger comes in where once you have that, 
you can kick money into something that benefits more than dollar for dollar in the liquidity abundance where you can benefit from this, right? But yeah. you don't have to put all your money at risk and hope that you get right. the last chair in the game of musical chairs. Exactly. You know, it, it, it's it's diversifying your portfolio properly. You know, Daniel, when we're using the supercharger analogy, you know, I work on cars and such like that. But if I'm going to put a supercharger on my naturally aspirated car, I'm going to go to a professional to put that thing on. I'm not going to do it myself. And, you know, and that's kind of the thing what we're talking about here to do this supercharger properly in their in their investment vehicles. You know, it, it, you probably should get, you need to get the right kind of you know, the right kind of professional to do that for you. You listen to financial strategies with Andrew Daniel Adjami. Today's topic is what you need to know in 2024. And, you know, we this show exists because people don't know what people don't know. We want to educate you and help you to know those things. So at least you know what questions to ask or where to go for the information or whatever so you can make smart decisions. You're the, the, the chief executive officer of your financial portfolio, your retirement portfolio. So you need, you need good people around you like a chief, financial, a chief executive officer does to be able to educate you. So that's what we want to do. So we got a report for you today, a book, a, a paper that we put together for you, Retirement Risk Report. Will you outlive your money? We don't want you to outlive your money. And this retirement risk report will help you understand why. This explains what the retirement risk report is. And if you end up one one of those retirement risk report, we can talk further about providing you with that. But this paper, retirement risk report, will you outlive your money, is a is is something that you need to understand some things about your retirement so that you don't outlive your money. You can have it for free by calling us at 800-725-7616. 800-725-7616 for your free copy of the Retirement Risk Report. Ask for it by name, Retirement Risk Report. RRR. RRRRR. Okay. You listen to financial strategies and what what you need to know in 20, 2024. And Daniel, it's, it's about pigs get fat and hogs get slaughtered, right? And something, you know, you're talking about, you know, people will, 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 you know, after a while, they're scared right now. And after a while, the fear of missing out FOMO will kick in and they'll go into the market and what they're going to do, because traditionally they do this, they're going to buy high and end up selling low. And that's, that's not what should be happening, right? Right now, the market is higher as, as we're recording this right now, the market is higher than the market has ever been by a little bit. Basically, it's where it was two years ago, but it's a little bit higher right at the moment. And but so what's that point? The point is the market is high and you know what you need to do. You know what the whole invest whole investment scenario is, right? Buy low, sell high, just like you did, Daniel, with that stock, right? Where you got 180% in a little bit over a year because you knew it was high. You didn't want to be a hog about it. You didn't want to get slaughtered. So you just were a pig, just took 180% return, right? Sold it, got out with it, getting good. Maybe it will go up more, but who cares? You made 180% on that. That, that, you know, nothing to matter with that. There's no shame in that, right? And so that's what we're talking about here and what, how people need to be careful. People need to, to look at and understand these things we're talking about. Liquidity is going on. Money's being pumped into the market. Rates are high now, but the rates may be coming down. And are you going to be prepared long-term for those rates to come down? Because they're not going to stay long-term right? A lot of these different things that we're talking about, right? You can't time the market. People say, like you said, Daniel, people say, well, I'm going to put my money out. I'm going to put it in the, in the money market account for now, but you can't time the market. You can't time. The thing is, is you get a good strategy that's going to work for you, put a supercharger on it and, and, and make out, right? Make some good money with this thing. Get the I and get the G like we've seen a lot of our clients do recently, right, Daniel? Yeah, yeah, the I the I has been crazy. So this 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 equation and if you got a piece of paper will help just write it down. Get out a piece of paper, write down TR the letters T R equals I plus G and that equals total return is made up of income and growth. And typically what happens is when you're younger and you're building up your money, you're investing for growth. And you're doing what's called dollar cost averaging. You're taking, there you go, TR equals I plus G. You're taking a, a fixed dollar amount. Typically it comes out of your paycheck and it goes into a market. 
And when markets come down, you buy more shares with the same dollars. When markets go up, then you're buying less shares, but somehow this equation turns out to do really amazing for people, where it's almost like they bought at the low all the time. And it's a really that. great strategy. The, the difficulty comes in once you've already built up your wealth and you change from taking money out of your pocket and saving it on a weekly or bi-weekly basis to taking money out of your portfolio, either to pay your RMDs, your required minimum distributions, to, to support your lifestyle, to buy a new car, to you know give money to your grandkids, buy present, whatever that is. And you start doing what's reverse dollar cost averaging. And think about exactly in reverse, where if markets are high, it's working well. But if markets are low, you have to sell more shares to get the same dollars. Ouch. And we've seen looking at people's portfolios from like around the 2008, 2009 great financial crisis, they never recovered. Because it cannibalized their principal. And even though now markets are higher, they were never to re recover because it eats up your portfolio so quickly. Oh, man. You're absolutely right, Daniel. And that is something people need to be aware of in 2024. Today's topic, what you need to know in 2024, we need to take a break. You listen to Financial Strategies with Andrew Daniel Adjami. A lot of things are happening. Pigs get fat, but hogs get slaughtered. You want to you want to buy low and sell high, and you know invest your monies in a way that you can put a turbo a, a supercharger on it. We have a book today we'd like to give you before we go to break. It's called More Life Than Money. The greatest fear that retirees have is to have is to have more life than money and to run out of money before they run out of life. Well, this book is how not to outlive your savings. We'd love to put it in your hand. Our friend, best-selling Amazon author, Anthony Saccaro, has put this book together and has a, it, what you know don't know about various topics and what you need to know. So we'd love to put that in your hand. You can have that by calling 800-725-7616, 800-725-7616. To the next five first-time callers, call now. This is Financial Strategies with Andrew and Daniel Adjami. Daniel, I was talking to our client Herman the other day, and you know, it was really crazy because he made he's been with us, I don't remember, five, seven years, somewhere in that vicinity. He came to us for the I on that TR equals I plus G, right? He came to us for the income and it was worked perfectly for him. You know, and I was talking to him and I was able to tell him how he got the G recently, not just the I, but the G. And what happened was in six months, his accounts were up $50,000 in six months on a $2 million account. And his income went from $137,000 in July a year, a year, $137 I thought that his, his portfolio was pumping out to $148,000 a year. His income had $11,000 increase his retirement income had an increase of eleven thousand dollars which equates to somewhere in the vicinity of 16 19 percent annualized increase in retirement income phenomenal for staying up with inflation i'm andrew adjami and i'm daniel adjami and today we're talking about what you need to know in 2024 and AAA. this is something that we specialize in. this is something that we work very hard to help our clients who are either in retirement or close to retirement change their paradigm of mm -hmm. investing where mm -hmm. they get paid they mm -hmm. get paid they get paid they get paid if markets go up they get paid markets go down nice. they get paid when markets go sideways now we always want portfolios to go up right as yes. as human beings we want to see our number go up mm -hmm. and we we don't want to change our lifestyle so one thing is set when, when you build a robust income portfolio that 
your life child doesn't have to change when it's built properly because you're swimming in dividends. You're swimming in income. It's always coming in. And if you don't spend it, it gets reinvested, which gives you even more. It's like, uh, is it Donald Duck who's always swimming in, swimming in his bucket of gold, right? In, uh, in the cartoons. Uh, his his and, uncle, uh, yeah. Or his uncle. It's yeah. it's like that where it's just coming in so fast that you got to you can reinvest it and get more or you can spend it. You can do whatever you want. But when it comes down, what ends up happening is if you're not spending all that income, you start dollar cost averaging again because you're taking, what did you say that portfolio was generating? About $148,000. Yeah. So you're, you're taking $147,000. And if you're not spending that all, guess what? That's like you taking $147,000 and saving it yourself, but you did not have to because your portfolio generated it and you get to reinvest it. So you win if market goes down and you win when markets go up. And this is why we keep talking about this strategy because for people who've already accumulated this wealth, it doesn't work so good for people who are trying to build the wealth, but for yep. people who accumulated their wealth, it protects your money while it gives you opportunity again. Daniel, you're not passionate about this stuff, are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'd like to dedicate this segment of the show to our clients, right? Because, you know, for you who are our clients listening to this show, this is what we're doing for you. This is, you know, you know what I was just talking about in regard to Herman, because that's probably exactly happened to you. The, maybe not the dollar amounts, but the percentages have been that same way. Many of our clients over the past two years have got double digit increases in their retirement income because we're investing for the eye and doing exactly what Daniel says. Cause two years ago, the market was where it is now. And it, all it has done over that two years is a giant V it's gone down. It's come back up. And now we've got people who are making a lot more dividends and interest because they were in the right place at the right time. And you as our client, that's what we're doing. We're doing this stuff exactly for where you were buying and selling that, you know, you've seen a lot of trades going on, a lot of buying and selling. We don't get paid for the buy for the sales and the buys. We get paid for because of what's happening to your money because of the money that you have. We don't get paid for all these transactions. It's a lot of work to do all these transactions. And I challenge anybody listening to this, you know, to find out, to compare your your buys and sells in your portfolios compared to our clients' portfolios. And what that means is if you're not have very many buys and sells, it doesn't sound like your people are doing a lot of work for you. And, and if they're not doing a lot of work for you, who are they working for? If they're not working for you, well, that's a whole nother show. But Write that down, Daniel. We got to do a show on that. Who are they working for, right? So anyway, the but but the point here is that that's what we're doing for you guys. We're putting you in a better position. You've been with us for years, so we've been able to put you in so that just recently, Daniel's been able to run through. He was really busy working night and day, buying and selling stuff to put you in a position to do these kinds of things like we did for, with Herman. And and that was because, and I, we appreciate your, your trust, your loyalty, and you were here, so we were able to do that for you. Now, for those people who are not our clients that listen to us, well, that same thing can happen to you if you're so inclined. If you want that supercharger, like Frank had the, the I plus the G, the G was the supercharger. We got the supercharger on, on his financial investments, and he's taken off with that as well as others, and, and that can be available for you. Well, you're listening to financial strategies, and Andrew and Daniel Edge, because people don't know what people don't know. And we know that you're hearing stuff today that you haven't heard before, and uh, we want it to be to be cutting edge when it comes to this kind of stuff. And we have a report that we put on that we put together for you that you can have to encourage you and help you and educate you further in this matter. It's called Retirement Risk Report. Call it RRR, right? Retirement Risk Report, Retirement Readiness Report. Will you outlive your money? Are you ready for retirement? These kinds of things. This report will do this. This paper is going to just give you an idea of what this report is about to see if you want us to do the report for you. And we can talk more about that. You can have the, the, the paper or by calling us at 800-725-7616 for free, or you can contact us on the, on the web. Our website is agme.com spelled with the two words, age, my a G E M Y.com. And you can contact us there, ask us questions or ask for the report, whatever you are call, ask, uh, call, ask for it by name. 
RRR, Retirement Risk Report. You listen to Financial Strategies, then you're Daniel Adjami. Today's topic, as we finish out today, is what you need to know about 2024. Daniel, you know, like I said to you, is that, you know, we're, I'd like to dedicate this segment of the show to clients. So what else, you know, you're the one that's buying and selling this stuff. You're the one watching this stuff. You know, we've got these different CFAs and organizations that we pay to tell us if these positions that we're buying are good and solid. We look at them when we buy them to make sure they're good and solid. We check them out as time goes on to make sure that they continue to be strong and solid companies, right? And you were telling me something a little bit ago about how people are positions that when, when, uh, you know, all these things start happening in this country, these companies, these things, they're going to be able to take advantage of the growth potential that's going to come because of the infrastructure being built upon. So, so tell us a little bit about that, please. Well, let's, let's clarify. We're, we're talking today about what people need to know about 2024. And there's the good and the evil, or there's the, the bears and the bulls. <laughs> and you need to have a strategy to protect yourself if the economic information, the economic data coming in is correct and we're ready for recession. But you also need to have a portfolio that you can benefit because one thing when you're when you're talking about money, there's the actual mathematical numbers, right and wrong. And there's the emotional side because we're an emotional being. So the money has to be managed not only to be mathematically correct, yeah. but to uh, manage the emotions of the people <laughs> money right this right. is a big thing yes so if we have we have all these liquidity events elections all these kinds of things where a, a lot of liquidity there's a probability a lot of liquidity will come into the economy and into markets which will drive up asset prices right and so how do you protect yourself from money printing, money debasement, liquidity coming into markets, and things just going to the moon while you protect yourself? If there's a recession, you don't want to lose your money and you need to maintain your lifestyle. And that's what that's what we're talking about. That's what we're doing here for our clients and how you do that. And what's been happening is investors have been given the gift of being paid to save. This is something that has not happened in my investment career where we have rates where they are now, where you can actually get paid. And we've been taking advantage of that. How have we been taking advantage of that? Going into things that will mathematically, we know what the return will be. How does that work? Well, you, you buy an investment that the company says, I will buy it back from you on this date. So you know when it will be bought back from you. It can go up and it can go down in the meantime. But you know, on this date, we will buy it back from you for this price. So you can do the mathematical equation to figure out exactly how much you're going to get it in return. Now, you can always do better because if rates come down as they have already since the peak, the value of the asset rises. You still collect the same amount of income, but the value of the asset rises. And when we're talking about I and G, the I is the income. It's the, in your example, AAA, the 147,000. You're getting that up market, down market, sideways market. But the G is when you watch the growth of the portfolio, the, the value of the portfolio go up, 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 up. And you can get that organically through investing in that 147, or you can spend the 147 and if you get G, the portfolio will still go up. Yeah. And so when you build right. this robust portfolio where you can feel confident when you know that a, 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 a company that's gonna benefit from chaos or a company with a rock ba solid balance sheet is paying you and they promise they're gonna buy this back from you at a certain date, you can have confidence to know you're getting your return of your principal, you're getting the return of your assets, and you're collecting a nice dividend in return, right? Money. Some nice income in return. Nice check. Yeah. And then on the other side, if you want to benefit from scary things, like, like we didn't even get into national debt, right? <laughs> and if right. you go look at the debt clock, somebody said to me the other day, isn't it like 31 trillion, 30, 31 trillion? <laughs> it's already like 33, 34. It, it goes up so fast. The amount of money we're spending, I, 
if you the amount of money we're sending is crazy. So you need to be able to protect. You can't just be in government bonds or money markets because right. what ends up happening is you start losing purchasing power when this liquidity stuff we've been talking about happens. So you add something that benefits more than dollar for dollar. Is it gold? Is it is it the liquidity barometer, Bitcoin, right? Some people don't right. want that. That's okay. But these things are things that you can... Build a robust portfolio to protect what you've earned, your bag, right? Mm -hmm. This thing that represents all this work that you've put in so that you can retire. And then if you so desire and you want to benefit from liquidity coming in, if it, if it continues to happen, you get something where you don't need a huge position size. You get something where you don't need it if it doesn't happen the way you think, where it can hurt your retirement. But if it does, you get multiples on that investment. That's what we're talking about, about a supercharger. We're talking about protecting the money you've earned and then putting a supercharger on there where you can benefit in an asymmetric way if liquidity continues to come in. Hopefully that's benefit for our clients whose portfolios are being set up this way. Oh, Daniel, that's great. That's great. I like that supercharger so that people can have more money than life. But, you know, I, I feel really bad for those people that have more life than money. And that's why I want to give you this book before we uh, get off the air today, More Life Than Money, How to Not to Outlive Your Savings. And uh, this book written by a friend, Anthony Sicaro, you can have this book for free by calling us at 800-725-7616, the next five First time callers, call for this free book, or you can contact us on the web, adjami.com, to be able to get that. 